Turning now to a presidency in peril, news, new Rasmussen polling showing this. A majority of voters say Biden shouldn't run in 2024 and would lose to Trump by double digits. As you see here, respondents there on your screen again, Rasmussen po pointing that out. So if a vote was held today, 50% would go to Trump. 36% would go to Biden, again, according to that report. This comes after a new Politico report saying President Biden is using fake sets to do press events instead of the Oval Office because he needs to have a teleprompter. All right, let's ask the panelists about it. Tom Borelli, Paul Chabot, Donna Jackson, thanks so much for, for sticking around. Um, my goodness, where do you start? Donna, let's start with the, the latest polling there by Rasmussen saying, one, Biden shouldn't run in 2024, even though he continues to indicate that he would. And then number two, showing that Trump would pull out a double-digit lead or double-digit win even if he did run. Your thoughts on that? Listen, we have a president that's targeting free speech, targeting parental rights. He's targeting children. He's created inflation, poverty. People are priced out of their homes. Rent is high. Gas is high. Food is high. I mean, he's created more division in this country than any other individual in history. I don't know if this economy and this country can even take three, two or three more years of this president. And so I'm not surprised. People, he just showed us how good the last administration really was. Well, you especially know, especially for black community. You, you look at polling and obviously many on the left would say, uh, you know, would probably hit on this polling or say it's inaccurate or say it's really not representative. But when you look at the facts of this, former President Trump endorsements, 55 and 0 in, in, in primaries, midterm primaries so far um, and beyond. And again, this continues until November. That's a big deal. That that there, even if you pull out the poll, um, Tom Borelli, I'll go with you, that, that paints a picture. Well, Sean, certainly uh, former President Trump is a force. Uh, we know that most recently with the, what you just mentioned, with his latest endorsements of uh, Vance in, uh, in Ohio. So we know he's a political force. He's going to be on Newsmax tonight doing yet another rally where he's going to endorse Dr. Oz for the Senate seat there. And the comparison between Biden and Trump, you couldn't see anything more stark. Trump closed the border. Biden opens the border. Trump was all energy, American energy policy. Biden is the Green New Deal. And it's harming Americans. Inflation is really slamming Americans every day. And that's why the Rasmussen reports showed such a big support for President Trump over Biden. Um, Paul Chabot, I'll go back to President Biden for a second here. Um, one thing that I've always uh, questioned is why we do not see President Biden in the White House press briefing room ever. You see every sitting president in there taking questions in this specific room. He does not. There were different sets. It would says it would said because of coronavirus, et cetera. But now the, a new report saying that he needs this teleprompter, and so that's why they have these fake sets. Um, but again, even with the sets and the prompters. There's still a lot of gaffes happening. Watch. Did you discuss with the allies today about Ukraine? New Hampshire. Really? You know, our natural wonders uh, are, uh, you know, inspire and the reflection inspires our right to take action. You know, um, I want to thank Commissioner Gary Batman and for being here as well. And uh, at the risk of stating the obvious here. God bless you all. It's 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 tough to watch, uh, Paul, and that's that's just the truth of the matter. That's your the, the president of the United States there, yeah. um, and really, it, I guess it, maybe it advocates for why they need this studio to, to to set them up in because clearly, without it, issues like that do arise. I just can't see him running for president again. I, and I can't see the American public uh, taking that risk. Look, this is a national security issue for our country right now. The president, uh, the buck stops with him or her. And at this moment, you can't go to the president uh, from a national security perspective to get honest analysis. Mm -hmm. If you can't hold a press conference and take questions on the fly, uh, you have no business in the White House because you are dealing every single day with very extreme circumstances that affect our national security. So if I were the Republicans, I would pound the drum that we need somebody in the White House 
who can take questions off the cuff, can address these critical issues affecting our country and our world. President Biden will hopefully just squeak through enough uh, to then end his presidency and turn this over to the Republicans to right the ship. Um, I'll go to Don. I, um, in control room, I don't need the sound, but I, I, I just wanted to get to this, uh, um, this story. Uh, Jen Psaki has uh, formally announced she is out. So fr next Friday, the 13th, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre will take over as White House Press Secretary. Um, the media dubbing this the first black LGBTQ plus woman to hold this position. Um, typically, you would tout someone where they went to school, their education, or where they were a spokesperson for. But instead of that, um, they point to other to other um, moments. Again, the first black, first gay woman to hold the position. There are also reports of this that her partner works at CNN. Um, more to follow on that, but Donna, again, just your your thoughts on that announcement. Listen, you know, this is a ploy. They want to put, and excuse me the way I say it, a token up there so that anybody who who will challenge what they're saying, they'll be called a racist, they'll be called a sexist, they'll be called a homophobe, xenophobe. You know, a, a, a person's identity does not create good policy. And th just to say that this individual is up here and name all of her identities doesn't mean that she's qualified. In fact, it actually takes away from her qualifications because you're saying that she didn't get this position based on merit. She got this because she checked the right boxes. And that is 100% absolutely wrong. All right, we'll leave it right there. Out of time, I believe. Tom Borelli, Paul Chabot, Donna Jackson, thank you so much. Great to hear from you. Enjoy the weekend. We appreciate your time here.